1952 Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. This is the last week of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and the stage is going to be busy. Little Big Town is bringing their hits Monday night. Get ready, Superman is coming to town. Three Doors Down lands Tuesday night. Then it's the night of Texas Storytellers with Kevin Fowler, Jack Ingram, Corey Morrow, Colby Cooper, and Mike Ryan. Did I get them all? Boy, that's a lot of stories. But there's more. Thursday, it's Brett Young, Classic Rockers Sticks Friday night, and Jimmy Allen Saturday afternoon. And it all comes to an end Saturday evening with the Rodeo Finals and Ryan Bingham. And always remember, let's rodeo, San Antonio. Now streaming the first episode of the new series on Apple TV Plus. Ben Stiller is in the director's chair for the new show with a dark sci-fi premise. CNN's Rick Damagella has it for us. Hello, my name is Mark S. And I have, of my own free accord, elected to undergo the procedure known as Severance. Adam Scott stars as an employee of an unusual corporate entity in Severance. I give consent to sever my memories between my work life and my personal life. It was really challenging. It was really fun. I mean, it feels like it might be like two different characters, but it's it's not really. Like my instinct, my first instinct was I would like one of them to like have a mustache and a hat with a long feather in it and then the other one to have something else, but Ben immediately said no to that. Ben Stiller directed several episodes of the series. The fun part of it is you get to dig deeper into these worlds and into the characters and um, I think explore uh, uh, more uh, specific and tangential things that I think are, are really, you know, really fun to get into that uh, make it feel like a fuller experience when you watch a whole series. Well, when I first read it, Ben sent it to me. I think they just sent me the first episode. And then I had a thousand questions. You know, what was the tone of this thing was my you know, question from the beginning. Because there's never really been anything like this. I confer upon you the advanced role of department chief. Congratulations. A handshake is available upon request. Thank you. May I have a handshake? In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I saw the first episode already. So you separate yourself from your home and your work, basically. Yeah, that's how bad your life is, <laughs> apparently. Ooh. All right, we have too much fun to do. <laughs> so how much do you know about President's Day? Uh, well, there is a pop quiz coming up oh, on SA great. Live, plus we got some tacos, longhorns at the rodeo, and a whole lot more. Hey, Mike and Fiona. It is a holiday, but of course we are hard at work here for a President's Day that you won't soon forget. <laughs> yes, we're going to get you filled up on birria taco quesadilla concoctions that we have not seen the likes of before. And there is a hidden gem on the north side. I get overly caffeinated at this coffee shop. Mm -hmm. They make a waffle latte and they have got the best creme brulee you have ever eaten. Ooh then we check out the Longhorns at the rodeo grounds and learn about the Watusi Bowl. And our dear friend Stephanie Pina Frost is here we're going to make some rodeo decor. And this black owned business is making delicious food and giving back to the community. We make a tasty recipe with Gnome's Catering. And last but not least, Jen is here and she's going to show us how to turn your bathroom into a happy space. We're not talking any happy space, how it can be turned into a spa. Yes. Why do you guys have to pause when you say a spa? It just makes you feel more relaxed. All that and more when SA Live continues in We're just relaxed. a few minutes. Guys, it is already 81 degrees Ooh. outside. We're on our way to mid 80s this afternoon. We'll watch for a few showers overnight up in the hill country. Even warmer potentially tomorrow, 86. And then it gets cold. 40s on Wednesday, 42 Thursday, 43 Friday. And here's what I'll tell you. This forecast will probably change a little bit. Models have kind of been all over the place. Stick with us. Check that KSAT weather app often. We'll be updating the forecast as soon as we can to let you know how this all unfolds. Guys. That's a I, I'm not great at math, as we all know, but that's a 40-something degree drop. It's going to be abrupt. Yes. Well, I don't want to have to wrap pipes one more time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for joining us for KSAT 12 News at noon. Did they say something about tacos? Is they that, got tacos and they, they got longhorns. And they got long, tacos and longhorns? And must, something relaxing. Must be Texas. Yes. Tacos and longhorns.
SA Live starts right, <laughs> I don't, can we stretch this out, right? Now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Well, hello, happy Monday and happy President's Day, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the day. If you have the day off, I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, we've got a little bit of everything for you today. Food, coffee, rodeo decor, a spa. Ooh, oh, ah. but I'm particularly looking forward to a segment that we are doing with a Longhorn and Watusi cattle at the rodeo grounds. This is new. But before we get to that, mm -hmm. it's not a complete day off because we have a little test for you. Nobody said there was going to be a test, but we have one on President's Day, a knowledge, a little trivia game, and you want to do the first question here? This is a here? pop quiz. This is a pop quiz, yes. Okay. There's no math, though. Okay, are you seeing this for the first time, too? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, question one. President's Day was created to celebrate and honor which president of the United States? Washington. Yeah. You got an easy one, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, question two. In which year did this holiday come into existence? President's Day, uh, 1983, when they changed it. I'm gonna go. Oh. oh. I, I, Cause I thought I saw it was called Washington's Day. I would've chosen C, because when in doubt, go C. <laughs> I was thinking when they combined the two, so, okay. okay. Question three. Yes. Uh, initially, every year, uh, initially every year, when was the federal holiday in the United States celebrated? What date? Uh, 22nd. 22nd, yeah. Well, oh, yay! Okay, yay. good. <laughs> okay, question four, name the President of the United States who implemented President's Day, and question two was a giveaway. Uh, Go with C. C. I was like, Polly Shore, <laughs> what <are> you guys? <laughs> when did President's Day change to the third Monday of February? This is what I was thinking of. Oh, B. 71? Mm. I don't know, you were there. It's true. <laughs> Okay. Not when they change it, but I mean, yeah, so anyway. Is okay. that it? So oh, what did we okay, score? Good. Uh, I think I we know. passed. Did we get a C <laughs> average on that one? <laughs> All right. Well, if you need a new place to try while you are off this President's Day, then we have a delicious birria slinging food truck for you to try. Yep. Here is a look at the last time Los Carnalitos dropped by. And, oh, I can still remember the taste of those great Quesa birria tacos. Ooh, they were good. And our first guests started their business as a way to help their parents pay the bills. And now they're helping people satisfy their guilty food pleasures. Yes! Yes, and Johnny Means, the owner of Los Carnitos Food Truck, is here to help us make some of their delicious various snacks. <laughs> All right, yes. we saw your little brother earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, so we are. Cooking. we're seeing birria more and more in San Antonio. For folks who don't know, what exactly is it? All right, so birria comes from Jalisco. It is the shoulder cut of the beef. It's cooked in a stew for five or six hours, and by the time it's done, it's very tender. It falls apart and very, very delicious. Absolutely yummy, right? Okay. Exactly. And so, what are we making today? All right. So today, you're making our birria. We call it sandwich. Mm -hmm. Sandwich. Simple. Love exactly. It. Okay. And then we make our queso birria tacos too. Okay. And then, just like Mike's doing over there, puts the bread down, puts the cheese on the side, and let that melt. And then you can also, yeah. And so your tacos kind of have an extra punch, right? Mm -hmm. tell, tell folks why. You dip it on the consomme okay. or the oil. That way it gets a little crisp once it's on the grill. And the cheese, you put it on top once it's also on the grill. Okay, and that's what I did with the bread too. Exactly. And because that's, good. instead of putting butter on the bread like a you know grilled cheese or something like mm -hmm. that, why not just kind of add another add layer of that great flavor from exactly. that? Exactly. And that's mom's recipe, right? Yes, sir. It's mom's mm -hmm. recipe. It took her quite a bit to nail it down. And then she started teaching us too. And yeah, it's a little bit of a headache because you know how your mom is. Yeah. She'll be on top of you <laughs> totally. and you're not doing it right. Do yeah. you get nervous when she raises the eyebrow kind of going? Oh yeah, mm. you know it, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to get it on point or else. Cheese on here? Mm -hmm. What's that? Cheese on the uh, tortillas? Exactly. Yeah, okay. cheese on there. Mm -hmm. Both of them? Once it's melted, you take out the meat from the broth, chop it up a little bit. Okay. Okay, and so this is one of your kind of, you know, m more popular items, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Is there anything else that's fairly popular? Um, we have our pizza oh. and our What's on, that? Our, on our pizza we have the birria itself, the cheese, onions, cilantro, grilled onions, chipotle mayo, sour cream, and then we also have our famous hot dogs that my brother just showed you how to make. 
Yeah, these things, that's no ordinary hot dog. Look at those babies when those are all dressed <laughs> up there with a little bit of bacon on them too. So yeah. The story behind your food truck is, I mean, just so, just so inspiring. Just Appreciate wonderful. That. Why did you start it? Um, it started off as a way to help out my dad and my mom to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. My dad had lost his sight about a year ago. Um, we didn't know what to do. We were kind of stressing. Yeah. And instead of, I guess, working ourselves uh, like a regular job, we decided to invest our money into a food truck and do what we know best. And people started liking it. And thank God, now we're here, and we're here with you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and again, you've got mom's recipe, which you, you can't beat that, right? Exactly. And, you and it's just good. It's that homemade style birria. And oh, oh, my cheese is, is cooking right here. So you put that. You can put the the toast on top of the cheese. So like this. Exactly. Okay, and get that down in there. Put the spatula under the cheese, mm -hmm. and then flip it. Yeah. You got it. You got Give it. it you one got big it. flip. There you go. Yeah. Ha, ha, ooh, and it's crispy in there too. So, and then that goes on the cheese. Mm -hmm. Put this? that on the cheese. Okay. Put oh, as much as you want. Looks good. Yeah. I got more going. coming. Keep incoming. Going. Incoming. Yeah. incoming. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. You also have uh, agua frescas, right? Exactly. We have our our. Uh, customer's favorite is our horchata. Mm -hmm. They ask for that one quite a bit, but we only sell that one on Sunday. So we make an awa, a different awa every day. So Tuesdays we have like watermelon, mm -hmm. and then Friday, I mean Thursdays we have cucumber lime. So we switch it up. Nice, so something different every day. Now exactly. tell us where the name came from. Um, we wanted something that represents my brother and I. So <laughs> Los Carnalitos means little brothers. Oh, I love it. Okay, and what's next for you guys? Um, we hope to open up a restaurant down the road. But for now, we're gonna jump onto like an outdoor kind of food park theme on the east side. Nice, Super neat. Because they said that was kind of one of your your dreams almost was exactly. you know to have something like that. Something like that. They're on the east side, so okay. All right, uh, sandwich goes on the. You put this right here. I mean, that right, right up there. Perfect. Right. Okay, and look at that baby. Oh yes, indeed. Perfect little beautiful orange. Patina, if you will, and oh heavens to Betsy, let's see, get that baby up there. You got it, you got it, you got it, you got it. You got it. Okay. All right, now I'm tell folks go. how they can find you. Uh, you can find us on Instagram as Los Carnalitos. You can also find us on Facebook as Los Carnalitos Texas. And shoot us a DM, ask us for our location, our hours, and we'll reply as soon as possible. All right, well thank you so much for sharing Appreciate your story, you. love it. For more information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or you see that QR code at the bottom left of your screen, just hold your phone up and snap a picture of that. Oh yes, those were very tasty. Now, if you need a little afternoon pick-me-up, there's a neat little uh, coffee shop that I tried a little while back. <laughs> okay, yes, Coffee Crush has a very creative menu, and I remember you being a little, you know, like caffeinated crazy that day. Oh yeah. Yeah, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Here we go. Is that another drink? <laughs> Coconut tastes good. I'm not gonna sleep for a week. Well, there's a new coffee place on the north side, and wait till you see some of these coffee drinks they have come up with. And Moses Hernandez is the owner of Coffee Crush. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. So, brand new place. I mean, it's still kind of fresh, right? Two, Two months. months? Two months in, in, the, in the making, so. What yes. made you decide to open another coffee shop? Our neighborhood. So, we live around the corner. We've been living here for the last 12 years, and we do have a, a few more concepts, but nothing close to home. So, we wanted to do something with the wild and you know we decided to do a nice little coffee shop in our neighborhood so, yeah. right here 1604 and, and Bolverde so just enough off the beaten path avoid all the traffic and, all right yeah. all right where'd you come up with some of these these coffee drinks so so the coffee drinks is pretty much gonna be my wife so my wife is the one that wanted to do something different our chef you know chef Adrian Fuentes you know he has a lot of uh, input in the, in the food as well and the desserts so with the actual coffee he does our chocolate Mexican chocolate recipe mm -hmm. so we bring it from our other location which is I love churros recipe to here, which is way across town. Which, speaking of chocolate, that's, that's this what first we're going to do right now. Now, uh -huh. what is this one called? So it's going to be Chocolate Abuelita Bonbon Brulee. Yeah, I love the name. Right. So, <laughs> so this is chocolate, and this has been cooked for like Yeah, so, so we do a chocolate ganache with it, mm -hmm. and we melt it down little by little, and oh, then wow. we add the milk, and we simmer for about 30, 40 minutes uh, right there. Okay, and then espresso on top of that. Yeah, so we're going to do a double shot of espresso. But we are not done. How many marshmallows? It's going to be about six to eight. Okay, so really pile those babies on there. This is almost like a s'more in a cup with the s'more chocolate and the marshmallows on here. We get to play with fire a little bit, so. Oh, okay, I'll see you later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that one's good. So I guess in the coffee business, you have to come up with something 
new and kind of over the top, which the name a lot. And as the name implies, it's a waffle and a latte. Yes. Double shot of espresso, fast pour, okay. then slow down at the top. Okay, so fast and then slow. Slow, okay. Good. Perfect. And now, waffle? Waffle. And these little mini waffles, just put them right in there? Go, uh, pick bottom, uh-huh, there you go. Like that? Perfect. Okay, powdered sugar, okay. With the whipped cream. Perfect, there you go. <laughs> and then a little bit of syrup. Breakfast and coffee. And dripping down there, but hey, let's go. Waffle. Okay, that's a rip. I'm making a mess of it. That's a great combination. <laughs> mm, per, mm, okay, don't mind if I do. And another one of the over the top drinks, and you said this is one of the most popular ones, yes. right? And it's called the? Uh, Shekarado. I Shekarado. Which means just shaking up coffee. Shaking right? coffee. Okay, so the espresso goes in there first. Uh -huh. And then? We're gonna do the flavor, which is uh, this. dulce de leche. Okay, and this just gets squeezed in there. Yeah, about an ounce on it. And how many different flavors? Uh, we got about 10 different ones. And then pull uh, it up. with milk, all the way to 16 ounces. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of the Marata sugar. One teaspoon of the sugar. There we go. And then a sprinkle of the cinnamon. Then cinnamon. Okay. Perfect. Oh, whipped cream. Can't forget whipped cream. Coconut shavings. Coconut on top. Cheers. You might need a straw for that. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Oh wow. All the different flavors that come out with that espresso. Mm. It doesn't get any better than this. Like walking in the sunshine. Later on in the show, it's a happy space that gives your bathroom the spa treatment. Plus, Jen has tons of fun in store for us down at the rodeo grounds. We get you up close and personal with Longhorns and the very large Watusi. This rodeo spotlight brought to you by the new 2022 Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. San Antonio Stock Show in Rodeo is underway and part of the experience when you come here, we all know the Longhorn. So of course those are here, but have you ever seen one of these animals? I have Russell from Cross T Ranch. Tell me what this one is here. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> this is a Watusi. a Watusi. It's something different that we brought this year. Instead of bringing our Longhorns, we brought something different for people to look at. And if you look at the horn set, it's completely different than the Longhorn. So the base is extremely huge. They don't get near the span, but they get a big base on them. He's a three-year-old, coming four-year-old, so they're a little late bloomers than Longhorns, but when they reach full potential, they'll be just as big and not bigger. And what's his name? This is Lone Star. Lone Star. We call him Rocky, but his real name's Lone Star. How would you describe their personality? Because <laughs> in you comparison know, to the Longhorns. He's my first one, so he's a little different. The characteristics are different, so. Uh, they walk different, they handle themselves different, the horns are different, so there's, it's, it's kind of a neat opportunity to learn how they are, but mm -hmm. they don't have the headsets different than the longhorns coming out of their heads, so they tie in different. He seems very sweet, and then you have some other friends back here. What are their names? That right there is Poncho, and this right here is Cowboy. Poncho and Cowboy. Now, can you let our viewers know, now obviously field trips and things can come out to the San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo, but, but at Cross T Ranch, you guys actually can take them to different events, is that right? I heard. We do huge corporate events. We do weddings with these guys. I have brides that ride in on them and get married and then take <laughs> off on them. So anything unique Western, if it's got something to do with an animal or cow, we do it. Got it. And which it, is our kind of niche, so yeah. I love that. And are there any fun facts that you'd like to share about either one? Uh, Texas Longhorns, people don't really know where they originated from. They actually originated back from Christopher Columbus, back in the days. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually came, came from, the, from the Canary Islands, and migrated into Mexico, ended up in New Mexico. They're called Texas Longhorns, but they all ended up in New Mexico. And then they had some Oklahoma and Texas ranchers that brought them in, mm -hmm. got a government grant, went to Mexico, brought them back, and they became Texas Longhorns. Interesting go. fact. That is an interesting fact. They've been riding these guys since the 1400s, so people back then when they build all these buildings, people want to know how they constructed them. They use these like oxen to do a day's work. 
Wow, how about that? So a lot of history. Then. A lot of history, yes ma'am. And how many do you have at Cross T Ranch? I've got nine of them, uh -huh. which keeps me busy on the road <laughs> doing stuff. So. Uh, they keep you a lot, really busy then. They do, and the mm -hmm. lifespan's on about 25 years. So when wow. I was trained one, it takes me about three or four years to train one, and then I have 10, 15 years with them, so, which is pretty good. And what have you learned about the Watusi back here, since he's kind of the newer guy, huh? You know, I'm, he, I'm young in him, so I've had him about a year, so I'm really kind of getting to know him. Mm -hmm. He's already broke the ride for a saddle. I'll throw kids on him. <laughs> he's just, his demeanor's different. So they walk different. They travel different. So. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of neat learning his, fat, you know, his different genetics from these guys. But they seem like they get along. They get along good. Everybody here gets along and... They actually don't accept him. It's kind of weird. <laughs> they accept him into their herd, but they kind of just push him off to the side. Oh. He eats last and he's kind of the... But <laughs> okay. he's going to be the star one day. But so. you're okay with that, right? Look at him. Yeah? You okay with that? Oh, and he, he loves goes. to be scratched. That's uh, what he's doing. Oh, okay. He here wants we... you to scratch him. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> well, this is what he likes. He's a big pet. so. I... And you guys will be here throughout the we'll entire We'll be here for the 18 rodeo. days. You bet. <laughs> All yes, right. So you can come see um, this cutie right here. He's quite friendly. And the come longhorns behind you. Careful, Ted. There's one coming up behind you. <laughs> he likes that camera. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for, for having us. for more information on the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo and Cross T Ranch, just head over to SALive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab. I think I made myself a new friend here, y'all. You like that? That feels good? Okay. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, of course, we've all seen solar panels. What about solar shingles? Now, they don't just use part of your roof for solar power. They use the whole thing. Here to tell us more on how it works is Dwayne Charping, owner and founder of Roofix. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mike. Okay, you work with Timberline Solar Shingles. What do we need to know about those? Yeah, so GAF is the uh, manufacturer of shingles and solar. Uh, they've been around since the 1800s, and they have been in development and building this product right at about the time Tesla came out with their first glass tile roofing system. Mm -hmm. And the exciting thing about this product here is its durability, it's powerful, and it looks good when it goes up on a house. It doesn't look like a rack mounted and, Tetris. I mean, there's the nailing strip like you would with a regular uh, Absolutely. Nailing shingles. And the other thing, when it goes on your roof, and let's pretend the floor is the roof right there. That's correct. They all get lined up and all hooked together. It's actually stronger than the shingles on your house. It has a, a class 4 rating, so you are not going to break the solar. It is hail resistance. Okay, what's better? Why are shingles better than the solar panels? Well, you know, panels is the, you know, so we do all solar. We even solar uh, you know, your Tesla to solar panels to solar shingles. And then, so you got a good, better and best, of course. The unique thing about the best, it just became just as a affordable as the rack mounted cheaper looking uglier looking solar so we're in the same price range and that's what tesla could not do jf has done so we can put this on your roof maximizing more of your space so we can get to net metering we want to reverse your cost of what you're paying on your electric bill we want to get rid of that cost and then you're going to pay a low monthly payment of maybe ninety dollars instead of two to three hundred dollars a month on a utility bill plus we are having rising costs we mm -hmm. all know utilities are going up and we're still having rolling brownouts so you get a lot of protection when you go with a panel like this because one it's backed it's the only solar that you can ever buy backed with a lifetime warranty and it covers full production and its components so people looking into solar and wanting to go green and taking advantage and wanting to save money instantly there is no cost to switch and great incentives and also you said aesthetically these match your shingles so if you don't do the whole roof and even architectural shingles you get them this. That's right. It's yep. not going to stand out like a sore thumb. No, I mean, it looks sophisticated and How clean. How about CPS rebates, tax rebates? That's, I mean, now's the time to buy. you got all these government incentives, right? You're getting 26%. And when you do a solar shingle, and let's say it's time for a new roof, you do solar shingles and a roof, you get a 26% tax credit on the whole product. That is huge savings. Plus, the utility companies are paying you $2,500 to switch. Okay. So with all the excess 
incentives that you have going right now. Now makes it the absolute best time. And rates are really low. So we have really low payments. And no payments till 2023, right? And no payments. Yeah, so you will go without paying anything till next year. Okay. Well, if you'd like more information on Roof Fix, just give them a call. 210-454-2400 or visit the website RoofFixSA.com. Dwayne, great talking to you as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mike. Rodeo season is almost here. How you can bring that country flair to your home with some fun DIY decorations. That's next on SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, it seems like there's a different holiday to celebrate every month, right? <laughs> Instead of buying decorations for each, how about getting a little creative? Yeah, it's really fun to do, too. Stephanie Pena Frost, owner of Princess and the Monkey, is here to show us some DIY and inexpensive, fun to do decorations for exactly. rodeo and, and really any time. Really, yeah, this it's Texas. Why not keep Texas decorations up all year round? And for y'all today, we're going to do these really fun um, sun catcher type of things. You can make them into wind chimes as well mm -hmm. and it's you take an old horseshoe if you can't find a horseshoe you can always use a piece of a piece of wood and then some old beads from old necklaces that have busted or just some fun beads that you find at the dollar store you wrap the horseshoe in twine first and then you, that's how you make the loop to kind of hang it with and the, the hanging part will go to the back so like Fiona yours is turn turn yours around yep. that way okay. so that way you can see the horseshoe part of it and then you take the uh, the beads that I put onto monofilament so I, I raided my husband's fishing cabinet yeah. and I made those for y'all to do and you just wrap it around and tie it in a knot around the bottom of the horseshoe. And you also said okay. to take the last little bit of uh, the string or the uh, the twine and put that through the last nail hole. Yes you okay. want to put the twine through the through the last nail hole that way it gives it that it, it'll help secure the rest of it that's wrapped around and uh, yeah so that way you kind it gives it that pretty look to it as well. One problem with using monofilament, you can't yeah, see it. Can't. It's harder to <laughs> see. You're getting closer and closer to it down nope, here. I missed, but missed that loop. Yeah. It, it, it's very strong and it's gonna it's gonna hold up. I've had some of these in my yard for about four years now. And, and it's so yeah, and it's weatherproof yeah, too. And it is weatherproof as well. And you said if you want, well. <laughs> and I'm and I'm an eagle scout. Some, I can't yeah. tie a knot here. Some so. Glasses. I do. Um, and so you would tie all those on there. Yes. And you said if you want to make like a wind chime. You can put keys on the bottom of it, or you could put spoons or utensils that you kind of bend the top over mm -hmm. and run it through. That'd be real so cute. So this is one that's on wood. And if you wanted to hang it, like we said, uh, you know, in the kitchen or something like yes. that, it's great with the, the lock bolt run out. And put, put, it it in the, put it in the window, and it's a horseshoe going the right way. So they'll bring okay. you lots of good luck all year round. All right, the okay. wreath. The wreath. So the wreath is with the straw wreath. And I took a pair of old jeans that had a rip in them and instead of throwing them away mm -hmm. I cut them up and I started wrapping this you start I cut each each leg and cut it half and then kind of cut each one around um, and then you just kind of wrap it around you put a little glue on it Okay. Kind of hold it in place. Just attack it, it place. right there. And then if anybody missed it earlier, when you're wrapping a wreath like this, where you're going to cover it pretty much, yes. leave the plastic Always on, like what it came in, right? Always the plastic on. That way it doesn't get all over everything. It stays intact. And plus it, keep, it helps keep the integrity of and it. And the, the bugs will stay out of it. The bugs will stay out of it. You won't get any weird things going in it. Okay. And then you can decorate it, of course, with. We have some. I've, I've pre-made some bows for y'all. Mm -hmm. um, you could take some some thick rope and kind of wrap it around it as well. I love Careful it. And, not to, and huh? this is great to use so, old uh, bandanas, bandanas and things yeah, like that. So so. I, I left the pockets where you could just put the bandanas into the pocket. Oh, okay. Kind of give it that nice little, like a back oh, of a yeah. blue jean kind of flare. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got about and, 30 seconds left, okay. so let's so talk this rub. So the last thing is the is the brisket rub or barbecue rub. Mm -hmm. It's chili powder, salt, black pepper, garlic powder, paprika, onion powder, cayenne pepper. If you want to add brown sugar, you can. I don't like to add brown sugar to it. Um, you just kind of mix it all together, throw it in a little jar, and it'll last for a very long time. I use it as a starter for my taco seasoning. I just put some cumin in it and some oregano, but it's a great rub for everything all season long. It. And you've got a couple of markets coming up, right? I do. I have some markets coming up. This next coming weekend, I'll be at the Helotus Marketplace. 
and I'll have some Western things up there as well. And then SoFlo the weekend after that, where I'll have a lot of Valentine's Day and other stuff. It's great All ideas, right. as always. For more information on Princess and the Monkey home decor, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And we meet a Southern Belle with a passion for cooking and making everyone's favorite dish from scratch. We taste some of Gnome's Catering just ahead. Well, our Southern Bell caterer is back. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. And Lydia Lewis uh, from Gnome's Catering is, and event planning is here, and she is sharing her great lamb chop recipe here. All right, so we have got okay. a good old cast iron skillet going here. Butter was getting a little bit warm, and a couple of good lamb chops. What do you... Um, Dust them with. Mm -hmm. Okay, I dust them with a pink Himalayan, Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. um, also, I might do Moultrie on steak season because mm -hmm. I think it's you should treat it like a steak. Mm -hmm. um, and I let them like get warm room temperature before I start cooking them. Which is so, the secret to cooking any sort of meat like yeah. that, bringing up the room temperature first, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah, I think it cooks well and you get the flavors absorbed just like how you like it. And then it's easier to get that nice crisp on those lamb chops. So is that kind of what makes it different? I, it makes it different, you know. I think lamb chops is a simple, easy meal. Anybody can really make it, you know. It's so dummy proof. If you ask me. <laughs> and I think it is. Yeah. And that's one of those things that nobody ever really thinks of yeah. lamb chops. And everybody's kind of like, ooh, I don't like the flavor of it. And you got to, you know, everybody does the traditional mint jelly with it, which you don't have to do, right? You know, I have done it with a truffle truffle sauce. I've done it with a mint chimichurri. I've done it with a regular chimichurri. I've done it with a white sauce. Which way goes over the best? Uh, the mint chimichurri. Everybody talks about that. That's the most popular that people always ask about. That sounds amazing, too. Okay, My now goodness. will okay. these finish in the pan also? They were finished. Okay. You know, most of the time you like a like a medium on your lamb chop. Right. And you can put the butter and the garlic and the thyme and the rosemary. That's what, how I like to do mine. So I've got basic. butter in there and then more butter. Is butter going in. A little bit more butter. Okay, there and perfect herbs in here and oh, just another whole stick of butter. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, you only you live once, right, yeah. folks? Butter, you can't go wrong, right? No, butter, you know, it's one of the things that it works pretty well with the dish. It's not okay. like you're going to eat this three meals a day every day, no. right? You can just splurge a little special bit. Special occasion. And speaking of special occasions, Valentine's Day, of course, coming up. What do you have got going on? Well, I'm, unfortunately, I am booked for Valentine's Day. You know, every, that's, you know, because COVID is so bad right now, people don't want to eat. Out. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my client base, they like, hey, can you come in, you know, cook for Valentine's Day? So I'm booked, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, here you go, a simple meal that you can make. And you can do a lot with lamb chops. You can add potatoes with it. You can do a risotto. You can also do like a salad. Keep it simple also. Okay, so this would be if you want to really impress your date mm -hmm. and do something good. Oh, look, honey, I made lamb chop. <laughs> in that voice, too. In that voice, too. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to run the other direction if you do that. So, yes. so overall, back to, back to cooking these. Um, so I've got all the butter in here. Yeah, you uh, do. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you only live once. Um, how long will they take to cook? Are they almost done? They I mean, usually cook like probably like two and a half, three minutes per side. Okay. Because you don't want them that brown. You don't want to overcook them because you lose the flavor and you want that tenderness when you bite into it. Is this one of the dishes that you do uh, for your catering? Yes, I do this for private, more so lamb chops and more so private stuff because, okay. you know, lamb chops are hard to attain. Yeah. What are some of the most popular dishes that folks request? Um, people usually request Request seafood, steak, because we live in Texas. Um, lamb chops is popular, and then I can probably say mm, fish. Fish. How, I, how do you think I'm doing over here? It's I think you can pull touch. them off. You can really pull them off. And let them cool. Okay. And uh, and you serve it alongside. And that right there, I have a summer salad with blue cheese, um, sh um, almonds, and strawberries. Ooh. And that's the thing also when mm -hmm. cooking uh, meat like this, you don't want to get it completely done in the pan because then there's going to be a little bit of residual cooking mm -hmm. too, right? So that's still going to cook up somewhat there, right? And it's times that I've used that for a sauce. I probably make it into a little sauce and drizzle it on the lamb chops. Okay, would you add anything to this to, to sauce it up a little bit? Yes, I'll probably add like a white wine and let it like reduce and 
Give it a uh, nice. I was looking over at the bartender's table. No white wine over there. So we can't <laughs> sauce over there. So. I'll probably reduce it and yeah. I would drizzle it on the lamb chops. Ooh. But I've done it so many different ways. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you so we'll, much. We'll, we'll skip the wine and just drizzle a little bit on here. Oh, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. For more information on Gnome's Catering and event planning, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or you see it right there on the bottom left of your screen. Just snap that QR code. Oh, and those garlic cloves when they've been sauteing in that butter. Ooh, a <laughs> little bit of heaven right there. Thank you so very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Your bathroom, let's be honest, it's a place that everyone uses, so why not make it beautiful? Today I'm joined by designer Shauna Percival with Starberry Creative Interiors, and you are helping to make homeowners' dreams come true with a beautiful room, a bathroom or powder room, and you're making it really easy. Tell me about these kits that you have. Yes, so we noticed throughout our client work that many of the homeowners that we worked with needed a simple solution for their bathrooms. They didn't need a full fledged design, they didn't need to move plumbing, they just needed all of the materials and fixtures and finishes curated, ready to buy, ready to renovate. And so what we have done is we have created an easy way for homeowners to take all of these pieces and we have put them in a beautiful curated design kit and we're helping them renovate with ease. Each of our kits comes with every single piece that you need for a bathroom renovation. From the floor tile, to the grout, to the vanity, to the mirror, to the sconces, to the light fixtures, to the paint on the walls. Everything you need for your contractor is on a curated shopping list. Nice. And we have multiple price points per item. Good to know. So if you are looking to buy your faucets from Lowe's, we've got a Lowe's option for you. If you want to splurge and go big, we've got that too. So you can really take the shopping list and tailor it to your individual investment budget. Perfect. So that's step one. Mm -hmm. We take it a step further by putting together renderings as well as technical drawings for the standard American bathroom footprint. I'm sure you can relate to the bathroom that you walk into that's got the vanity, yes. then you've got the potty, yes. then you've got the tub and shower combo. Yes. Like we all have a bathroom like that in our right. house, right? So this kit collection and all of our collections are based on the footprint of your standard American bathroom. So as you mentioned, these different styles change every quarter. So let's talk about what we have here today. Okay, so we can start with our moody kit. Now green is all the rage right now. We are seeing green trending in the design world. And so what we decided to do is create kind of a, a woodsy chic design. And so this is our moody collection. So we have got these amazing plaid floors. We are going to pair them with a variegated green shower tile for a real big contrast nice. mood moment. And then what about this one? So this is going to be our trend kit and we do name them. So this one's named Isla. And Isla is inspired by that sun-kissed beach cottage. Mm -hmm. She's soft and earthy and we've got this beautiful, again, variegated blue tile for on the walls paired with white, some crisp white tile all throughout the bathroom. This kit, we have been inspired by a spa resort. Ooh. So kind of a mountainside spa. Mm -hmm. We've got pebble tile for on the floor. We've got some real interesting striped walls, but it's all neutral. It's all those very soothing topes and grays and whites. And our accent of color will come in with greenery because everybody, you know, greenery boosts the mood. I love that. Spa in your own home. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, this kit is our colorful kit and it is inspired by the East Coast. So the East Coast vibe is vibrant. It's got some deep blues. We've paired the white wall tile with a very interesting stripe. We love working with subway tile. Subway tile is timeless and our goal with all of these kits is to create a timeless design that is not going to be trendy, not going to go out of fashion. So everything that you see is fairly neutral as the base mm -hmm. with some accents. Wonderful. I love how easy you make it. And confidence is key when you're dealing with the contractor. Very good points there, Shauna. Thank you for showing us your amazing kits here. For more information, where can people go to purchase these if they're interested? Yes, sourcedkits.com is where you can find all the latest collection. We also have 
uh, a newsletter that goes out that covers all the relevant topics on renovation. And even if you aren't renovating a bathroom and you're just thinking about it, we offer a ton of design advice, both on our Instagram channel and on our newsletter. So it's always worthwhile. I promise you'll learn something. That's our goal. Perfect. Wonderful. And for more information, you can head over to salive.com where we've provided information on the sourced and Stileberry Creative Interiors. Sean, thank you so much. Thanks, Jen. Tomorrow on SA Live, we are exploring Black History Month through cosmetics. This local makeup brand is making tones for every skin type. Plus, we fill up on Caribbean-inspired cuisine, and of course, we will be making jerk chicken. But you won't believe what we are going to make with jackfruit. That and more tomorrow at 1, right here on SA Live. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this President's Day. Hope you did better on the uh, quiz at the top of the show than we did. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> All Oops. right. Well, we had a blast. And of course, we are going to be leaving you with a new single from local country musicians, Brett Mullins Band's new album. Take it away. Here's a little song that'll tell you all you need to know about the great state of Texas. That's why we call it Home Sweet Texas. A one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> There's beaches, canyons, hill country, cactus, big trees, big sky, big buckles, this white, long horns, long necks, barbecue, and tex mix, Billy Bob's green, all of me, another honky tonk. There's cowboys, cowgirls, stall back and big girl, wranglers, ropers, king ranch drovers, livestock, rodeo, six flags, a yellow rose, blue bonnets, and the spring and blue bell ice cream. Yeah, I've been all across the USA, east of New York, west of L.A., met a lot of nice folks in a lot of nice places. I'll be hanging my hat in home sweet Texas. Now there's Rangers, Rangerettes, Amarillo, Sunsets, Dallas, Fort Worth, 